Get ready, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for kickoffs and kick ons. <laughs> G'day, welcome once again to Kickoffs and Kick Ons, the Rugby Pod Revolution. It's well and truly underway. We are in episode four of our debut season, and you'll never bloody guess there's four of us in the studio. That's right. Ew. 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 It's good to have you all back. I'm very excited. Hey, I've got the intros before you all talk. Tommy has written some intros. Okay. Tommy, do you want to come and sit in while we do this, mate? Come on. Name and shame you. Just so when you do insult people, they can look right into your eyes Um, for those of you that haven't watched this before Tommy Erskine he writes our introductions and they're a thing of beauty and uh, for those of you that are outside of Australia it's Tay Tay Fever at the moment here Taylor Swift is in town um, and she's made about 1.5 billion dollars off us Aussie (laughs) suckers maybe she could uh, sponsor the pod has anybody taken uh, spoken to Tay Tay you should I can try did you go out with Tay Tay (laughs) no I didn't go out with Tay Tay (laughs) she's not talking to him (laughs) For our international list as Australia is ablaze with Taylor Swift fever as she is in town performing. So it is safe to say this show has a little bit of Tay-Tay flavour this week. Tommy's a big Tay-Tay fan, aren't you? <laughs> the Coco Show wouldn't be the Coco Show without our three homegrown nifty Swifties. These three fellas can hum a tune and, cut a, and can cut a rug like no other. If rugby caps were handed out for your God-given snake hips, these blokes would be in the <laughs> 300 club. So please welcome our three superstar members of the Coco family band that have endured a cruel summer but are not officially writing their podcasting love story to rugby <laughs> mate you are a proper swifty nufty our first living legend has been called the songbird of his generation some have even called him senior honey lungs we know him better as the bloke with the blank space in his head he is a lover not a fighter and will always champion our song he speaks his mind and never pulls any punches. This at times has backfired with a little bad blood between him and one specific <laughs> sports network <laughs> that rhymes with all brand. <laughs> On a Saturday night, he's the Romeo to countless Juliets, but we all know the record business is a numbers game. So please put your hands together for a man that will never be on the Triple J Hottest 100 chart, but is certainly one of Australia's most wanted he is our big, bold, and bootylicious Drew Biv Mitchell. Hey, shake it off, boys. <laughs> bootylicious. Nothing in the head. See where I got it there? Nothing Tommy, that was plenty. a little Tato. Shake it off. Yeah. The next gent oh, is sorry. a man that has gone triple platinum on top, but he is solid gold down below. <laughs> <laughs> he has played across a couple of eras, and on the surface, it appears he has a squeaky clean reputation. However, when Holiday Swoop emerges, he goes from the boy next door to a feline frenzied man about town. <laughs> <laughs> this fella puts the smooth in. I wish the prof reads my intro smooth. <laughs> and the cool in. God, it will be cool when this podcast makes money. So please make him feel welcome. A man that has more fans than the Melbourne Rebels, but significantly, <laughs> significantly less than Taylor Swift. As the crowds get shifty for Swifty and tangy for Travis, our <laughs> listeners are about to get droopy for Koopy. <laughs> of course, I'm talking about the Senny Coast singing sensation Swoop. Oh, hey, yeah. dear Tommy. I like how Tommy laughs at his, <laughs> He knows what it is and he still laughs no, It's very good Tommy. Do you want to say anything to the Rebel supporters? Uh, uh, good luck <laughs> All the best I love how sweaty you get under the oh, lights <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Last but certainly not least This fellow goes Cray cray for Tay Tay And he is the coolest thing this show Has to its very own version of Travis Kelsey's Shorter and stouter brother Jason <laughs> This fella has pitch like Prince and hips like Shakira minus the tax fraud. And after a few special brownies, people often call him a high C. (laughs) (laughs) He is nifty on foot and swifty by nature. He is going full Benjamin Button on us and is playing footy like he is 22 again. Please welcome a man that is after his 12th Mai Tai. He can't find a toilet. He will make like the Frozen soundtrack and let it go. (laughs) However, this legend will never forget to shake it off. He is our little melodic mastermind that is all about the bass, the one and only Matt Goitan. Gitao. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, Tommy. Nice, Tommy. How many little um, Tay-Tay references were there? I think I counted uh, 33. Yeah. Solid. Do we have a large – is there a big crossover in the Taylor Swift rugby union community? I believe so. Yeah, I saw. I went to the concert on Friday night, and I uh, I saw a fair few Coco T-shirts. Well, makeshift ones, obviously, because the official ones aren't out yet. But they were there. <laughs> Tommy, very good. Thank Take you. Take a breath, Tommy. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, the official maybe ones a, weren't out. Maybe a cold shower. <laughs> 
It's Tommy Erskine. Very good. Um, now, the set. Let's talk about this. Goitan, you're seeing it in person for the first time. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, it's amazing. It's nice. Mm. Uh, the lounge looks great. I like that I've got my own seat. The rug. The rug. It's nice hard. Oh, I yeah. love the rug. On Ruggie what Olsen. I really like, the little setup yeah. there with well, the crackers this is and beers. New. This is... <laughs> This this is appliances online have provided all of this and you can get whatever you want there, Goit. Do you yeah. need anything for your house? Cold plunge? They do cold plunges. Do they? If not, then they <laughs> can leave in a place that does. Surely your pool in the backyard in Canberra is a cold plunge. No, not at the moment. It's beautiful in Canberra. 30, 32, 33. Oh, goodness mm. me. Uh, what we've got here, yep. Goit, it's an Oliveri sink. And they're, uh, they, you can get them at appliances online. Mm. Um, and what we've done, it's a beautiful sink. Um, it's wonderfully made. Um, I wish I had a sink like this. Yeah. I don't. Um, but what we've done, we've turned it into a bit of a makeshift esky on one side. So we've got beers. Let's hand them around here. Yeah. Now, might. Um, these you might be seeing what the beers are. They're Great Northerns. They do not sponsor the show. <laughs> they do not. No. But if you are watching and you are from Great Northern, we will be sending an invoice. And it's not cheap. Uh, and then on the other side here, boys, we've got... A cheese platter. Now, this is, if you remember, I had to buy 76 litres of milk. I've now made oh, cheese. Oh, blue cheese. <laughs> so, yeah, this is, that was, uh, it's all the cheese. So, we've got truffle cheese, uh, brie, and I believe a cheddar. I don't know. If you'd like some, does anybody want any cheese or? Oh, I'll definitely get okay, into that. Get yeah. Into yeah. That when you can. Dried mango. What, if you uh, say you weren't keen on the snacks, could you fill it up with extra beers in the other side? Is that how it works? Yes, I could have done. Well, you can also use it as a sink. Wow. So dishes, um, if you want to uh, like wash a small dog. Yeah. Or yeah. What were two, you saying? Two small two dogs. Two small dogs. What were you saying? <laughs> There's your cold plunge. <laughs> you can fit joke. in that. You can fit that in that. That was my joke. Come on. His, his sexy little waist could fit in that. 100%. Yeah, that was Goit's joke before the show. Yeah. Oh, was it? And now Biff's Yeah, stolen. I tried to railroad it. Swoop. Yeah, Swoop was listening. <laughs> Now, uh, also, you might see some new footies on set. Gilbert have been kind enough to send a few balls along. That's a super rugby Pacific ball. We've got a nice Wallabies one yep. up here, and I think there's an Indigenous Wallabies one over there. Uh, again, more Contra. Um, Are they paying for that? that? Are we paying for that? Oh, right. No, we didn't pay for that, Gilbert, but there was no cash sent. It was just more stuff. So in terms of sponsorship, we are good at getting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're good at getting stuffed. We are. <laughs> this won't exist in a few weeks. No. no. How we're long do you give it? A few you. Mate, you can tell them about the meeting we had before. We've got three weeks. <laughs> we had the auditor in. We've got we've got three weeks. Uh, socials absolutely going off. Kick offs and kick ons everywhere. Insta, uh, X, uh, YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, now, Goit, you were out of the country when we discussed this challenge that we've all agreed to. One hundred percent. If we get fifty thousand likes. And no, subscribers. Subscribers. Yeah. subscribers on oh, YouTube. I was getting a tattoo, wasn't I? Yes. Yeah, you told me I'm getting a tattoo. Yeah, you're yeah. getting cocoa on your neck there. <laughs> oh, the neck's aggressive. Okay. Mate, I'm going to get hair plugs in Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> if you think that's that aggressive. Would look so good. <laughs> I, I think I'll, my head will reject it and I will die. But look, the one thing you hope it's not aggressive is mine. I've got to do the show now. <laughs> <laughs> And what was sweet? <laughs> oh, I've got to add another name onto my already long Oh, name. legally. Yeah, yeah, legally. Adam Ashley Cooper Coco, <laughs> which is very nice. So, and if, a ball lake. Yeah, it's Adam lots Ashley. of paperwork. Yeah, that's going to suck. Going to Turkey's going to be okay, fine, but you having to fill out some paper, out. that's really going to suck. Driver's license, passport, <laughs> insurance. Oh, really? Oh, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a mission. You yeah. might be able to get into a few of those places you banned from, though. <laughs> <laughs> New name. <laughs> Uh, yes, so click uh, subscribe and then you'll see us do all of that stuff. Will you do full nude or will you go ball in front of the nude or will we get the pixelator oh. guy to come in and pixelate at certain Balls points? <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Um, no, go there. What were you going to say? No. <laughs> no. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, what What was the deal? Nude. Nude. Pixels yeah. would be good. We'll talk to it. <laughs> <laughs> now, coming up on the show... Uh, uh, it is wall-to-wall -wall rugby today, which is we are a rugby show. Mm. And if you're here for your stats and analysis, you've come to the right place. Uh, we're going to be doing a brand new segment called the Super Rugby Super Duper Roundup. 
um, which is going to be all about the first round of the Super Rugby, which we all watched every game, and it was uh, it was a fantastic opening round. Uh, Fraser McWright's going to be joining us. Yeah. yeah, obviously the Reds had that big win up against the Waratahs up there at Super- at Suncorp. He's uh, going to take us through all of that. There's also the Six Nations summation, which the Northern Hemisphere people legends. Oh, I love it. Legends up there, and they love it. Big Jim Hamilton's joining us. That's quite the coup there, Goit. Yeah, yeah. Well, trying to help our subscribers. He's a big name in the UK. I don't like him, but he's a big name, so <laughs> it'll be good for us. He'd be the number one rugby podcaster in the world, wouldn't he? Have to big be. Jim. Well, maybe the second. Mm. Behind. Yeah, you see what yeah. I mean? Okay, yeah. go. Do you think he'll collab on anything for us? or? Uh, yeah, he's a good fella, right. I think. You just went from hating him. Yeah. <laughs> Well, in case he's uh, he's listening in now before we dial him in. Okay. Well, let's hope he does that. That'll boost the numbers. Um, we're going to be going through Jim's career. And, of course, there is the quiz, uh, which is always a lot of fun. Now, uh, before we get Fraser up here, I thought we'd have a quick little chat. Have you boys watched the Wallabies doco on Stan? Yep. Just wanted to get your initial thoughts. I've got a few questions based on that because you blokes are Wallabies. But let's get your thoughts first. How many stars? Um, what's it out of? Five. Five is always... I would say two. Two stars? Just because, for me, you just get the good pitches, the good parts. I don't think there was enough behind the scenes. It seemed like it was quite well controlled in, in some areas. I'd love to hear what happened, you know, what the players thought. Um, after everything happened, you know, I'd like a bit more after. Mm. There was a lot of a lead in, which was good and really interesting. You know, behind the scenes, how hard they're training, all that stuff. That was really good. Um, but I would like to see a little bit more after. Drew, how many stars? Uh, I'm not going to rate, obviously. There's, oh, yeah, I'm know, not rating either. Pre- previous employers, <laughs> I don't want to, you know, but I, I did think that there was, I, I think the editor's cut would be the one to watch. Everything mm-hmm. that didn't make it, I think Rugby Australia had final cut or whatever the that agreement was. But I would I would imagine there's so much they just didn't put up because it might look bad or it might put people in certain situations. I don't know, but it felt like the juicy bits weren't there. Um, but I did like I always like going into team meetings uh, into the dressing room. I thought that selection table chat was was pretty unique. Um, mm. So like you know, there's some good stuff, and also I think you know, I guess we we always know footy players are going you know training hard and getting out there and working hard, but also to sort of see them go through it and the way that they just kept going like that that really rainy, muddy day in New Zealand and they're in the showers. Like, you know, like you wouldn't think they've just been put through the absolute ringer because that's, you know, effectively what, what it sounded like. With yeah, the, I thought from the player's point of view, it was really good. Even, you know, it's not great to see Tanyelli get injured, but just the emotions the players go through um, and then, you know, the fans or spectators actually getting an insight into the, the highs and lows um, of the sport. I think also the psychologists, she had a lot to say around selection meetings. I thought that was a bit strange. A bit it, well, it seemed like she was saying more than the actual assistant coaches. No, the assistant coaches didn't say a single word the, the whole in those time. meetings. Yeah. Eddie spoke. But not even in those meetings. There was times where there was one on the sideline where Eddie went up to a couple of the assistants and were like, you know, training was really good today. You know, like going out like the whole time and they were, like, they were just like. Are they allowed to talk? <laughs> <in Eddie's laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. I found it. Silence to- rules. Yeah. Uh, there was no silence rules when I was around, but... So I'm going to get your rating in a sec. I just wanted to ask you guys, did Eddie flog you as hard as he did those players? Like the injuries, most of the injuries were out of the training sessions. Mm. Did he do that to you guys? Um, yeah, I mean, you would train hard. Mm. I don't know. I don't know because I was, we were all pretty young and new into our career. But Everything was hard do, for me then. Yeah, you're just thrown in and you don't ask questions, you just do it, so... We didn't have um, a base to kind of judge it against at yeah. that point. Mm. Seemed pretty full on. Seemed a bit too full on. I, I mean, I haven't played international rugby, but... Yeah, the, I mean, there was an admission, I think, from Eddie saying that the Will Skelton one could have been avoided because he got the training mixed up the wrong way. Well, or did in the, three the days in a row. Yeah. Um, but that's, I mean, that's also the fine line that the coaches have to, to, to walk as well in terms of making sure they get everything they can to prepare them, but then also not going too far where it puts them in, in danger. Swoop? I won't rate it. But um, it was a little bit of an uncomfortable watch, to be fair. Yeah, um, it's a bit sad. In terms of one, because you know the outcome, and two, you're kind of just reliving the pain that you kind of went through when you're back in that environment. You know that, I guess, the insight they were they were giving us kind of allowed us to be back into the change room. And I think, you know, we've been part of unsuccessful Rugby World Cup campaigns, yeah. and it stings. And I think to kind of relive it in a way in your own right, but also the playing groups, right, that went to, to France in last year, it was just tough. It was a tough watch for them. 
Um, so, you know, you kind of, you feel for the players, but... Do you reckon they watch it, though, the players? I reckon if you're starring, you do. Well, yeah. funnily enough, we're about well, to chat you, the one if you yeah. could actually ask. If you're featured yeah, quite a lot, I think you do, but... I, I'm not going to rate it. I wouldn't rate it. Why would you rate <laughs> it? I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. You, only an idiot would rate it. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. <laughs> uh, I I enjoyed it. My favourite character was uh, Morgan. He was great. Yep. Um, oh, Morgs, yeah. He was good, wasn't he? Uh, Morgs, get off. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a lot there. Yeah. He was just saying what we were seeing. You know, yeah, we get it. <laughs> I'm looking at it. Uh, and my favourite, I like the villain. I thought he was great. He was Eddie. He was scared. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Hey, as I mentioned, we do actually have somebody that was in that um, – in that documentary, um, who's sitting on the line right now. Um, now, Fraser, I know you're listening. Just so you know, uh, Tommy always writes an intro for our guests. And generally speaking, I can't find it in the document. Um, so I've just got to make my way through here. Normally, Git says something about, come on, mate, get on with it. Uh, I found it here. Here we go. We're all yeah. good. Yep. Here we go, Fraser. This is courtesy of Tommy Erskine. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another Aussie superstar this week for you on the Coco Show, one of the rampaging Reds who, in many people's opinion, has now acquired ownership of the Wallabies jersey number seven. He's truly one of Australia's brightest rugby stars. This bloke was born in Badirum, but now Badrum. calls... Damn it. Oh. Briz Vegas? Home. <laughs> this fella is often compared to an Australian cattle dog by teammates and coaches, as he has a healthy appetite for work, fearless in the field, and he is known to relish a good belly rub and often eats scraps from the table. <laughs> <laughs> this guy has often been considered as the understudy to one Mr. Michael Hooper, but now he has been thrust forward into the heat of battle and he has yet to come up short. This fiery red blooded Queenslander has cashed his checks by putting both of his filthy maroon clad heads into places where most people wouldn't put their hands. Not only does he do it with aggression and pride, but this bloke eats that shit for breakfast. Known for leaving nothing on the pitch, this guy is also regarded for enjoying life off it, whether it be trimming his beautiful porn star Mo, going to the local nudist beach, or enjoying one specific <laughs> Queensland beer that tastes like boiled toilet water. <laughs> Even with Australian rugby being pulled from pillar to post at the moment, when you watch this bloke play, you can't help but feel like everyone is going to be McWright in the end. So please put down your Eddie endorsed cattle, pro Eddie endorsed cattle prodders and put one of your <laughs> ceremonial Akubras as it is time to toughen up Australian rugby. And this fella is leading the way. It is time for the one and only Fraser McWright. Hey. Yeah. Fraser. That was a nice intro. Hey guys. He's a lot nicer to the guests than he is to you guys, mm. I've noticed. Well, he did say he had two heads and what was it? Some sort of urine or something, the beer? Forex does taste like urine. No, I like Unless it. Unless they're sponsoring us, in I which like case it. it's great. <laughs> <laughs> you do like Forex? Well, I mean, I grew up up there as well. Oh, uh, so. I yeah. forgot. So for those of you... Sorry, Fraser, how are you? <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm, good. I'm just watching you guys chinwag and admiring uh, Git's haircut. Oh, you like it? Yeah, I do. I might, uh, might copy her, but I think... You have plenty of time. <laughs> I wouldn't do it yet. <laughs> I'm impressed with me. <laughs> hey Fraser, we were just chatting about that Wallabies doco, and we're wondering whether any of the players have watched it. Have you watched it? No, I haven't. No, it's um, sort of similar to what uh, um, Coop sort of said there. It's uh, yeah, a bit of a weird, uncomfortable one. I know some boys definitely have, um, but it's probably going to be something in a few years, or not a few years, a few months. Um, I might watch it when I don't get head noise from it. I reckon. Do you reckon Nick White watched it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so so yeah. Yeah, wasn't he? So, yeah well, it's a nice like, little family. Film, yeah, he, he was he was in there for a lot of it, Fraser. So when you watch it, you'll understand. <laughs> right. Uh, now, uh, big win over the uh, over the Waratahs on the weekend. Congratulations, mate. Uh, got it done. You got across the try line as well. The boys must be pretty happy with that. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, yeah, it was a great um, sort of game. Uh, obviously, first game at Suncorp for a while against the Tars is always a tough. Tough match, so to be able to go out there and you know, while it was a bit dewy, a bit wet, still get you know just under twenty thousand people there at the stadium and get a good win was good. My first uh, first competition game with Les Kiss at the helm. How's uh, Les been? Uh, you know, throughout the preseason and then leading into last week's game. Yeah, Les has been great. He's obviously coached a lot. Hey, he's international. Um, he's been overseas a, f a fair bit and I think he really gets it and he knows how to communicate really well with the boys and uh, he's brought some good coaches along that, you know, super detailed and they're able to, you know, get everyone better and get on the same page quite quickly. Preseason was tough, obviously, up here in, in Queensland post-Christmas. Uh, it was bloody hot and humid. 
I sort of felt like I didn't really stop and, and it was just fatigue after fatigue. So he was really good in, in managing the load and, um, you know, keeping us fresh heading into the trial games. And, uh, yeah, he obviously has played for State of Origin, so he kind of sees that Blues jersey and, and hates it. So he's able to get the boys up for the past two games, which is good. Just quickly on Les Kiss, the first time I ever met Les Kiss, we played against Ireland over in Ireland, and I was at the, par- the post-match function, dropped a, quite a few pints of Guinness, and I went into the to the bathroom, into the urinal, and I was, you know, I was, I was urinating, and then all of a sudden, Les Kiss stands next to me, and I was like, "Oh, I'm having a Les Kiss next to Les oh, Kiss," that's good. <laughs> and he's that's like, so good. "G'day, mate. How are you? Yeah, Drew." Yeah, I was like, I was, was, I, was, "I was over the moon at the urinal, or do you wash the, your hands?" Uh, I think I put my hand out, and he said, "I'm all right," <laughs> and then I, then I spoke to him on the way out. Do you say that to Les? Fraser, do you go, "Oh, sorry, Les, just got to go for one of you, mate." <laughs> oh, it hasn't been uh, mentioned. There's actually a there's a song out about him, I think, on Spotify. So. I think that's what the boys are getting around first. Well, I thought it must have been a singer or something when I first heard about it. Like, because <laughs> going for kiss. a Les Kiss for ages. Yeah, I don't know. Ah, ah. For a long time, going for a Les Kiss, I didn't know about it. Or so it's rhyming slang for piss. If you're yeah. sitting right now in Wales or Scotland, going, what are these idiots talking about? Yeah. Down, down here, if you're going for a piss, you say, "I'm going for a Les Kiss." But it's mm. been. It's almost Forever. everyone says it. My mum says even, it. Yeah, I was about to My say. Said it. Yeah. <laughs> Going for a Les Kiss. Um, <laughs> God, love you, Dan. Um, Fraser, what, what, Les Kiss, obviously a, a rugby league background. When it comes to coaching and training you guys, is there a big difference between him and, and Brad Thorne? Uh, it's a good question. I think, um, yeah, there is a difference. Uh, you know, what Les does really well is he kind of uses his assistant coaches to do a lot of the – a lot of the training, um, similar to the fact like Thorny would sit back and watch, um, sort of like Les sort of does, and, and have they both have their own right of chiming in. And you know, if, if something needed to be said, they'll say it. I, but I think um, obviously Les has a bit more of an attack game and attack focus. That's where he likes to sort of put his input. So you know, anything attack wise, he's making sure he's speaking to the tens, chiming in really well. Um, you know, Thorny was a great. Uh, you know, Ford's coach, and, and that's probably where, and the breakdown area, that's where he sort of stood out. So that's definitely the difference. Hey, Fraser, in uh, in a lot of the press conferences and I guess the articles leading up to the first round, everyone's talking about Kissy's vision of playing football. You know, it's spoken about it numerous times from the playing group. Can you expand a little bit on what that vision actually is or the key messages when he's referring to the vision of the Reds playing rugby this year? Because obviously on the weekend you had a solid win, um, you know, a big change up in coaching staff from last year. Um, you know, is it the attack or is it a mindset? Is it a an attitude or just the way you guys are playing together? Can you kind of touch on that a little bit for for us without giving yeah, too much course. away? Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's the whole rounded game. Obviously, you know, you got your set piece, you got your defence, want to be brutal there. I think the way Les sees it is is obviously the attack. So, um, you know, being really skillful, you know, obviously coaching Ireland for a while and then going to London Irish, you know, being able to run direct and then backing ourselves with a tip or backing ourselves with an offload. Or if you're running dead square, dead straight, you can still pull that flash option out the back. Um, it's, a, it's a high work rate sort of shape. So yeah. I'm sure the back's... You know, and in the forwards in the middle are working really hard. And so it's sort of not just folding around the corner. It's just making sure you're up, ready, reloaded. And if the backs of the 10, they're calling that flash, you're pulling that flash, all the tips on, you play the tip. So, so you, you want to hope three. that flash isn't your call. <laughs> <Yeah>. Because <laughs> is, it, is flash your call? Maybe. We might need to change that. So, you, <laughs> okay. so flash it's isn't when the ball is going from either 9 to 10 out the back of the forwards or from a forward. To a back outside of oh the coach is back uh, coaching oh, I just, oh, you, that's what you you're not all saying that it. are you no you're all over it all <laughs> <laughs> uh, mate it looked like uh, you and and uh, Harry Wilson's combination really picked up where it left off from last year Harry obviously overlooked for the the World Cup campaign last year can you just touch on um, you know just how you understand one another's games and why you always sort of seem to pop up and and sort of have that really strong interchange. Yeah, I mean, we've been, you know, we've known each other since we were probably 13. We've been playing rugby with each other since we were, you know, 18. So we played a lot of footy together. Um, and I suppose we're just good mates off the field. So we talk really well about it and um, we're able to understand each other's games really well now. We know, you know, he's a great offloader and he finds himself in space and he knows I'm sort of following him. So if he can get a 
sort of I'm free, I'll be there to pop up and yeah, we just like to talk about it, about it and, and off the field we can get away from 40 as well and just, you know, have a bit of fun. <laughs> hey, hey, Fraser, last week Fergus Lee Warner on here said he was going to fold Harry Wilson. Was there any folding taking place out there or, or did he miss him? I don't know. Did he get him? I don't think he missed him. I don't him. think he did. I, was no, there much chat out there? If he did. Was there, is there still a lot of lip that goes on out there, a lot of chat during the games? Yeah, there's a bit of lip. Who yeah, would be, who'd be number one lip. for well, Queensland and who'd be number one for New South Wales? Uh, Jed loves a, loves a bit of a barb, Jed Holloway. Um, he's always trying to get stuck into the props or, you know, <laughs> if they get a scrum pedal knee, he's always first to speak, which is frustrating because he's just pushing. Um, <laughs> Wilson's always pretty vocal too. Wilson loves a bit of chirp. Yeah, very good. That's what we want to hear. Yeah, yeah we I do. love that. Yeah. Yeah, you love yeah. that. Shit. I want to know exactly what was said, but uh, obviously you can't do. It you were off quick camera. too. You kind of run out, and even before kick off, you'd be spraying someone just to kind of <laughs> really? get yourself into the game. Yeah, he was ruthless. Did you ever see like an anger management coach? Or anything? No, no. <laughs> I just liked if you were playing mates, it was good. Um, you just didn't do it just to mates because I used to hit him up after a game. I go, mate, why do you do that? Why are you lifting up the blokes? He goes, oh, it just helps me mentally get back into the game because then I'm accountable. <laughs> yeah, well, it does keep you accountable because if you want to spray someone, like yeah. say, for example, I don't know, you were bad at reading Tommy's intros. intros. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy example. <laughs> but if you were spraying us about reading intros, you'd have to be good at it. You know what? So, Next week, like, guess who's reading the show? Yeah, oh, that's what I was after. <laughs> yeah, Tommy can sit there and sweat and watch you. <laughs> hey, Fraser, um, Next week, we are down at Super Round. You obviously have the Hurricanes down there. Did you catch any of the yeah. uh, Canes versus the Force, mate? Yeah, caught a bit of it. Probably the um, back end of that first first half and sort of the first bit of the second half, then switched it off. Uh, Canes won. Yeah, convincingly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I've got the score right here. Somebody remind me. Uh, it was uh, plenty to nothing. Yeah, mm. it was. It was yeah, forty-four it was... to fourteen over there. It's a bit of a shame. Yeah, but I'm sure was. we'll touch on that later, eh? We will. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah, get into those we'll real quick. Uh, yeah, we do. Hey, Fraser. The only thing at Super Round that I wanted to bring up is that we have none other than uh, Joe Schmidt on our little podcast, which is quite the coup for us. Um, what do you make of Schmidt? Are you, ex- you excited to have him in and around the Wallabies, coaching them? Yeah, obviously haven't haven't spoken to him yet. Um, heard really good things. Obviously. Les has worked with him before, and we had, you know, our head physio worked under him at Leinster. So, yeah, hearing really good things, and, yeah, obviously hasn't really been a bad thing out there, so really excited. And, you know, he's a, he's a Kiwi who loves running rugby and, yeah, keen to, you know, get stuck in there. Is there anything you want us to ask him for you? Is there <laughs> – we can pretend it will say it's for a friend of ours. There's a, girl, there's a mate who wants to know. <laughs> if, he's a chance. if he's a chance, you want to – Yeah, put, put me in there. Give me a plug somehow. <laughs> Mate, I think your footy's doing uh, that. Um, just what about looking ahead to uh, the Hurricanes game? What, what are you guys? What are the focus areas um, that you've got to work on? Yeah, obviously the, the Canes are very strong and athletic team, right? So um, we lost a. There's a lot of turnovers as well. I think we had 14 or 15 on the weekend. So I think that's probably number one. You can't really be doing that against the Kiwi side, though, especially Hurricanes up there. You? So um, try to keep those errors to a, a minimum and uh, really execute when we're when that A zone again. Well. Good luck down there against the Canes. We'll see. If you're bored and you want to come and have a beer, mm. um, probably post-match, I'd say. Is that how it works, boys? Yeah, I'm not sure. When do Queensland play? When do you play? We play uh, with the last game on Sunday. So oh, Friday, well, Friday night. Yeah, oh. Friday. We've got, yeah. Swoop's got a booking at a place on Friday night. <laughs> but, um, you send him the deets. Swoop. Yeah, right. Okay, no worries. Hang on. If I don't know the details, <laughs> uh, how am I going to send go, mate. Righto. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, righto. <laughs> hey, uh, Fraser, I'll, there's a little something I've come up with here. This might never see the light of day. Uh, but it's just I'm trying to get people to get to know uh, the the super rugby players as sure. best as possible. And the little game we've come up with today is called Mc, McWright or McWrong. Oh, I okay. like that. Okay. So we've looked Never up a few little before. facts about Fraser. I'm going to ask the three boys here, Fraser, and then you, can you tell them if they're right or incorrect? McWright, you mean? Yeah. McWright or, or McWrong? Uh, McWright or McWrong. <laughs> Okay, here's the first one, gents. Uh, Fraser's teammates call him the slab because he is shaped like a slab of beer. McWright or McWrong? I'm going McWright. McWright. Oh, I think it's McWrong. Yeah, I think McWrong. I mean, you've got a great body, but it's not... It's a bit more... <laughs> what do you want here, Bill? It's not slabby. What are you saying? Oh, I think it's, it's maybe his ability to, to drop a slab. Drink. Okay, hey, Fraser. 
Why do they? Why do they? A, do they call you the slab? And B, why do they call you that? Are. I'm going to say Mick Wright, but I don't know where you're getting teammates from. It's only one person. It's James Slipper. So <laughs> he's, only, he's only calling me Slab because he used to get called Slab. So he called me Slab Junior. He's fast today. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to That's dodge experience. that. He's trying to get rid of it. Give it to me. Very good swoop. Ding, ding, ding. No. Oh, one. not really. Seemed to, I think we'll just call that even. <laughs> <laughs> Competitive. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, even. Yeah. Fraser is a massive Lord of the Rings nerd. He believes that Samwise Ganji is the goat, and without him, there would be no fellowship. <laughs> Who wants to go? Goit first? Uh, no, go for it. I'm going to go McWright. Yeah, McWright. 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 Fraser? Hey, you're, all, you're all spot on. I have, I'm, who's, going, who's getting this in? <laughs> <laughs> Um, be in red, mate. I've actually never <laughs> seen a Lord of the Rings. Oh, mate, you're missing what, out. Yeah, I'm saying. They're all Star Wars. Oh, my God. Not the greatest Wars. trilogy of all time. I think my mate, f- the you first just, one came oh. out when I was on a tour and I was so exhausted from jet lag, I slept in the in the aisle and never went back. You know that Wallabies? What? <laughs> you slept in the aisle? Yeah, like because well, the other boys were watching it and I just slept. Where haven't you slept? Yeah. <laughs> in my bed. <laughs> uh, it's a good trilogy. Um, you watch that w- Wallabies one? Gotcha. It's pretty similar to the Wallabies one. Yeah. Do you know that <laughs> there's a character in Lord of the Rings called um, Gollum? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a character in the Wallabies that's a bit like that. Anyway, uh, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, he got it. <laughs> um, Fraser is a massive supporter of the Brisbane Broncos. McWright or McWrong? McWright. McWrong. Seems just too obvious. Yeah, it, it does. That's a curveball. McWrong. <sighs> Fraser? Yeah, McWrong. Hey, oh. hey, oh. Who's your team, Swoop Fraser? three from three at the moment. Who's your team? Yeah. Who do you support? Oh, I don't really support. I Probably the Cowboys. Broncos I do support, but I'm not really a big fan. You know, I'll... League's it's league. one of it's the great fence watch, sets there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Just in case they invite you yeah. to training. Can we get a <laughs> score check at Footy Park? Yeah. Well, he's two, not two, you're two and three. one, probably. <laughs> one three, mate. No. Give yes, mate. Coming. Tommy, right. we're going to count you. back. Fraser, um, Fraser in a pre World Cup camp told Eddie Jones that flankers are the rock stars of a rugby team. <laughs> McRide or McWrong? <laughs> oh. I don't think you're saying that, McWrong. <laughs> I don't think. No, nah, not nah. to Eddie. That's McWrong. Yeah. No, nah, I back his brass. I'm going McWright. <laughs> <laughs> Fraser, what's the story there? Mate, there's no story. That's McWrong. I- oh, what are you doing, mate? Back yourself. <laughs> Eddie told you that though, right? No. So we're in we're in France and we're doing like a press conference after a training match and some journo just brings up this rock star thing. And I'm just hearing, where have you gone this piece of info from? I've never... <laughs> Never said this, never heard it from Eddie. And then they just write about it. And I've heard it about five times after. Yeah, so. now it's factual. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, who, who was. So, so he's what wrong. I've got Swoop's no wrong. idea. What so, I've gone to three. Are. Swoop's still Mate, two. You're not three. And no, no, no. Uh, Drew's I'm, I'm two. This is derailed. All right, last one. A uh, tiebreaker. I can have blokes here <laughs> keeping score. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Two. So, you don't even just. Hey, okay, well. Fraser. <laughs> f- last one. Fraser <laughs> is six feet tall, but has a massive size 14 feet. I know he wears ASIC. <laughs> do you wear ASICs? I do. Shout out to ASICs if you want a sponsor. Um, <laughs> Good work, Biff. <laughs> um, 14. No, I don't think they're 14. McGrong? Yeah, McGrong. What are you going, I'm going to go out on a limb and say they're a, t- <laughs> they're a 10. What are you going, Matthew? No, not a 10. Hmm, show us your mitts, can you? Can I look at your hands? <laughs> oh, mate. Hold them up. Well, oh, yeah, he's a 14. Jeez. That's McWright. Yep. Yeah, definitely a 14. <laughs> uh, the answer, uh, have you got it there for us, Fraser? Yeah, McRod, I'm a 14. There you, there you go. Drew yeah. tried to give you a size 10. Absolute flippers. I got 10s. <laughs> yeah, meow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Fraser, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, um, excuse um, me. Uh, Before you send him off, winner, who was that? Who won that? Oh, sorry. Hey, 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 hey. Draw. Draw. No, it wasn't. It was 3-2-1. I went the same answer. It was 3-3. Three, three. 
You got it wrong. He you said he went to Eddie with the. Just while they're arguing, Fuck Fraser, I'll just say yeah. quietly, thanks for coming. <laughs> well done, bro. We beat him. Yeah. Good luck against Give the Canes. Some. Great start to the season. Yeah. Okay, they've now agreed. That's fantastic. <laughs> Who did you decide one? That was a draw. We drew. Drew lost. As long as Biv loses. Yeah. yeah, we beat Drew. <laughs> hey, Fraser, thanks, mate. Thanks for your time. Uh, Reds are hey, looking thanks, awesome. Guys. And yeah, we might. Appreciate being on. On yeah, Fraser. Good luck, mate. Mate, we'll get you in person next time when you can have a few beers. Catch up. For sure. Let's get the slab of slab as a thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. good shit. Yeah. Good. Uh, right. 4X Sweet. only, though. <laughs> <laughs> Mangoes. I don't Mangoes. like our chances of getting yeah. 4X for free. We'll have to pay for that. <laughs> um, thanks, Fraser. Thanks, Fraser. Thanks, Fraser. Thanks, Fraser. Um, what a Cheers, champion. Guys. Bye. Uh, geez, we can make a number seven in this country. Yeah. Can't we? Can't we just play 15 number sevens? Or does it not work like that, rugby? Uh, <laughs> it's not been done. But South Africa are the first team to pick. Seven, one on the bench. So maybe you're onto something. Fifteen sevens. Uh, hey, let's run through these Super Rugby results reasonably quickly. We've got big Jim Hamilton very yep. soon. Um, Chiefs Crusaders, that was the grand final replay, went right down to the death. Uh, Chiefs 33, Crusaders 29. Crusaders had it uh, right up until the end and the Chiefs a couple of penalties. Um, any surprises there, guys? No, I thought Chiefs started off out of the gate. They were clinical to start with. Typical Crusaders, never beaten. They clawed their way back into the game. It was a super contest, and I think probably the the best team, in my eyes, I think actually won that game. Brumbies 30, Rebels 3. Um, bit of a shame there for the Rebels. Um, obviously, a lot chatted about them pre-season, but um, went down pretty heavily to the Brumbies. Yeah. Did you? Uh, yeah, I mean, Brumbies were clinical. Um, you know, really good performance from the number eight. Uh, uh, Kale, is it? Yeah. That little chip yeah, chase great, getting yeah. in front of Lockie Anderson. Um, but, like, a really good, solid performance from the Brums. I, I think with the Rebels, yeah, I, like, I can understand the sort of the emotional side that they've been going through. Um, you know, you would hope that it wouldn't now have too much impact on the field. But it's because we're going through the same thing, so we do understand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like there is going to be an element to it because, yeah. you know, for some of them, they yeah, may not know where they're going to be mo moving forward and stresses on, you know, some might have families, whatever it might be. So it, it would definitely play a toll. But... Um, you would, I don't know. I guess as a team in that situation, you'd just have to get together and just go, look, for the 80 minutes we're away from it, let's just get our minds on on the job. Because the, they're a good team that recruited well. I, I think they've got a lot more in them. Uh, Corey Toole, he's something out yeah. of the box. Is he a Wallaby bolter or? Yeah, well, I, mean, I think he's obviously up there. Mm. I think he was in the squad uh, at one point. Uh, I actually played club rugby with him in 2020 during the COVID, uh, those COVID times, and he was kind of on the fringe of of the Brumbies. Uh, and Marco Caputo at the time didn't pick him because he was too small to start for us. We lost the grand final, so Marco, hang your head. Chalk, <laughs> chalk, chalk. <laughs> chalk yeah. Love it when you call blokes out on this podcast. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. Hurricanes 44 defeated the Force 14. Swoop. Um, Don't clinical. ask me, son. I didn't watch it. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> did you see it, Big? Uh, yeah, I, I set up for that one. Um, again, look, a team like the Force that recruited well, you know, we, we were over there a few weeks ago, spoke to Simon Cron. They felt like, you know, like even all the boys, yeah. they've been gelling really well. So just probably just some of the same errors, a bit of um, ill discipline as well. I think uh, the, the prop got cited for a dangerous tackle. They looked at it afterwards and saw that saw that it went. Uh, it met the red card threshold, so he's facing the ju judiciary at least. So, oh. um, yeah. How are you not in standstill? It amazes me. <laughs> Oh, there's only one bite you need to ask for that. <laughs> Is it you? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Highlanders 35, Boana 21. Did you catch this one? Goit, can you say anything on it? Yeah, I thought um, obviously Moana started well. Um, Tana Umanga's first game in charge. Yeah, yeah. And I think obviously they look like a, just looking at their socials and, and whatever else, they look like a really tight knit group. Uh, probably just a little bit outgunned, you know, for the full 80 minutes. What about uh, Julian Sarver playing 12? Yeah, 12, yeah. yeah. I think, what is he, one or two tries away from... So he's equal at the moment with Israel Flower, I think, on 61. For the 60 most or tries. 61 tries. Yeah. Wow. For the most tries in Super Rugby. And um, I think TJ Perinara from the Hurricanes is maybe two or three below him as well. So active players still... You were up there, Swoop, weren't you? No. No? Not for Super. Oh, <laughs> that's a... <laughs> what for? Couldn't tell you. Yeah. Hard to say. Uh, the fullback, Jacob. Mm. Go on. Ratu Matavuki Neepkins. 
Is that right? Did I get nice. that right? He is so much mm. confidence. Saying yeah, that. I practiced it. <laughs> wow, uh, amazing player. Um, I don't know if you caught. He, he's well, yeah, I mean, unbelievable. I, he's fantastic. But I think you know what the, the teams over the other side of the ditch—they just love that transition and counter attack. Like, you actually probably you get more opportunities in counter attack in a game these days than you do at set piece, and yet. We train so much set piece, don't and we? And not enough counter attack, broken field, transition footy. Why does the ball stick in Kiwis' hands more than Aussies? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They toss stuff up, catch it. Whereas lately, bigger hands. I think is that what it is? I think so. Mm. I, I, no, it, I disagree with you. I think the Australians are going super well. <laughs> <laughs> so good to have you back, mate. <laughs> He's Reds to get and Reds 40, <laughs> Waratahs 22. We went through that with Fraser. Uh, Reds looking red hot. Red to hot. To say the mm. least. Red hot. Also, the fact that, like what um, Fraser alluded to in terms of their kind of attacking mindset, you know, the, the first points, first opportunity for points was in front of the goal. They thought, thought they would have taken the three, but they've opted to go to the sideline. Mm. They get seven points off the back of that, which is a huge boost, particularly early on in the game. Two tries off rolling more, so that's a great set piece strategy. They've got that up their bank. They've obviously been working pretty hard on that. And the other couple of, or well, the other try was off a of scrum. The other, actually, the other two tries were off scrums. Like these guys are clearly put in some work over the preseason. Um, they've tried well. First game went pretty well, even though it was dewy conditions. And you know, like Australian teams historically have pretty poor in round one. Mm. They were, they were, they were class. Mm. So you know, they've got an exciting season ahead. Absolutely. Tom Liner did well in the ten, mm. getting the first. First crack at that in the ten. I thought Hunter Paisami versus Izzy Parisi oh. was was worth watching in itself. Mm. Uh, those bikes were just some going of those collisions were at right? each other, mate. Um, yeah, some good performances. Obviously, you'd you'd like a little bit more polish, but that'll come. Um, you know, there's a couple of little drop balls under you know, under some pressure and that type of thing. But I think uh, the Reds look pretty impressive. Absolutely. And apologies, I missed Blues 34 defeat of the Drua 10. Um, the Blues they're obviously one of the competition favourites. Mm. That was in Coming tough conditions. Like, yeah. The wind was particularly hard. Um, it was with the Blues early, so they built a score and and basically kind of not hung on, but like they they didn't blow them away like they did in the first half. I think that wind played a, a pretty significant factor. Right. So round one done, cracking round one for Super Rugby. It's back uh, and it's great to watch next week. Round yeah. two, Super Round Melbourne. Boys going on tour. That's right. We are down there all. <laughs> we are down there all weekend. We are the CFOs, the Chief Fund Officers. They've employed us because they know. Gosh, <laughs> we are lots of fun. A um, couple of things. One, the Coco Bay on Saturday. You can um, grab a beer there for. Now he wants oh, a slice mango. of mango. So. There's the Coco Bay. You can come and sit with us for the uh, Moana Pacifica uh, Nudrua game. Mm -hmm. uh, come festively dressed. We're going to be dressed. We're going to be decked out in hibiscus and uh, having a great time. You can sit with us. Twenty-seven dollars if you go into Ticket Tech, or there's a link actually in the YouTube here. You can sit with us for the Coco Bay. Then on Sunday we are recording the podcast down in Melbourne. I think you can still get tickets to that if you want to come and sit in. Uh, and as I said, John Schmidt, sorry, Joe Schmidt is on. <laughs> I don't think we've got John. Have we got John? <laughs> no, we don't. That's a shame. He's a good laugh. Also, uh, there's an obstacle race at halftime between the two uh, between the two matches. And guess what? No. Well, yeah. Remember the race that disappointed the nation, you two blokes? <sighs> Mate, yeah. it's I was, back. I was the dancing bear at my last job. I had to do all these you know, things inside, inflatable balls and all sorts of stuff. Did you? And so I'm now a dancing bear here. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but you got your mate Swoop with you. Hey. So, well, I, we'll work it out. Maybe, Goit, you might do it as well. I might do it. We'll see how we go. But yeah. we're going to be out in the field. Could we uh, be racing some Coco listeners? Yes, that, that's what we'll do. We'll pick a Oof. couple of listeners from the crowd. Yeah. Um, slow ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we'll take them on. Um, now, the other thing they want us to do, just real quick, is uh, pick a song for their playlist for the oh. DJ down there. Mate, you can't put me on the spot. You can't oh, just pick a song? No. Nah. Really? What have you got? A uh, fast car I was playing on the way up. Yeah, Mate, right. that'd I put everyone at, in the stadium to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you're gonna I know, but like... I'm going to do Nick Cave into your, into my arms. Do you know that one? No. Sing it. Into my arms. <laughs> Mate, oh, Lord. play that one off Lots the back of, of mine. It's, I think it's the number one played song at funerals. <laughs> Good. So. We'll play it at yours soon. <laughs> <laughs> My professional funeral. Yep. I think we've already had that. Um, all right. Anyway, pick a song. We're going on with that. Hey, guys. Uh, oh, yeah, songs. Um, Mr. Brightside, maybe? 
It's a fun, fun yeah, sort yeah. of upbeat. And theory. what do you want to do? What about Stadium drops Mansion? of Jupiter, Drew? Yeah, I can drop that. You can drop that. Yeah. Okay, very good. Hey, I was thinking a little bit old school, like Womack and Womack or Dragon. Return of the Mac? Um, oh, Return of the good. Mac's a big one. Isn't mm. there a Coco the song? Coco Mo. Coco Mo. Kokomo is a good one. Hey, let's not keep our special guest waiting any longer. Jim, I know you're listening. There's a man on here called Tom Erskine that writes intros. And today, all the intros have been Tay-Tay based, but I've just looked down at this and I believe it might be Scottish based. Is it Scotland, Tommy? He's nodding. Uh, apologies in advance, Jim. Here it goes. It's time to get excited, ye Coco faithful. On today's ep, we have a very special guest that will dance a little Kaylee around your eardrums. I know what you're all thinking. This bloke will be the proud yet prickly thistle sprouting from this compost heap of a show, adding some much-needed podcasting credibility, and for that, we are thankful. On the footy field, this fierce lock donned the blue of Scotland 63 times, spreading fear amongst opposing teams with his chiselled jawline and barnstorming runs. But unfortunately for Jim, Scottish fans were more likely to get a sighting of the Loch Ness Monster than of Jim crossing the try line. <laughs> oh, that's punchy, Tommy. So toss away your cabers, let the bagpipes hum, and reheat your haggis. It's time to go train spotting. <laughs> Please welcome a man who is classy, not cocky, generous, not tight, and always goes kilt no undies. The man with the breeziest balls in the business, and like headbutting and heroin, he is Scottish to the bone. <laughs> oh, mate. It's, of course, the one and only big Jim Hamilton. Are you there, Jim? Oh, I am here, bright and early. How are we? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> what did you think of that intro? <laughs> oh, I absolutely loved it. There was a few true words in there, and there was a few ones that are uh, clearly made up to sound poetic, um, as you'll hear by this North Hebridean Scottish broad accent. There's a twinge of English in there as well, and for that I apologise, but some of it was good. The heroin bit sounded good. Was it heroin to the bones, was it? Uh, yes, uh, spot on, Tommy. Um, well done. Hey, Jim, um, we've got you on for the Six Nations summation, um, and we could not have timed this more perfectly. Mm. Um, so what we like to do is we just run through a few results with our guests, and then we dig in deep into a bit of your career. Um, and for us, mainly today, it's going to be getting some podcasting tips, <laughs> um, just because we're fledgling. Um, but... Congratulations to you and the whole of Scotland, mate. Uh, retaining the Calcutta Cup for the fourth year in a row. Scotland winning 30 21. I'm assuming you were there at Murrayfield and you, got, you managed to see the whole thing? Yeah, I was there. It's not even a thing now. It's come that easy to <laughs> Scotland as a country to beat England. So, yeah, I mean, you made it, you, you bigged it up like it was a thing now. Um, it's <laughs> not really a thing. It's, uh, it's comfortable. I say that in jest. No, it was epic being in the stadium. You know, we can talk a little bit more about the rugby and go deep into it, but a massive win for Scotland. And you'll maybe touch on the France game as well, what should have been for the try that wasn't given. Um, we'd be on for it. We're on for the fan slam, they're calling it, not the grand slam. <laughs> um, but yeah, wicked, wicked. Uh, it was actually a really good game and people are criticising the quality of some of the rugby. But as we know, lads, uh, sometimes it, it's... It's blind beauty, and it was brutal at times. Yeah. It, it was a fantastic game. So Scotland to come away with the win, the way that we kind of started the game, the pressure we've been under going in there as favourites. England had some huge emotional drivers. I don't know if you heard the sad news about Jamie George's mum passing away a couple of weeks ago, oh. and mm. they were all playing for her. And you know, Jamie's a, he's a he's a great former teammate of mine as well, but. Uh, this England team are, are struggling at the minute to find a little bit of identity. And I said in the lead up to the game that I'm confident Scotland were going to win. And that pissed a few of the lads off as well. So I've got mates of the team. But I, I think from a Scotland perspective, we are. We're very good now. And they've got a lot of thanks to give to myself and a lot of the players <laughs> that put the foundations in and, and didn't win a test match um, at all, really, at the highest level. So I feel a large part of the Scotland win, I'll be honest. But it was, in summary... It was a it was a fantastic game to go to, deep rooted in history. And you, lads, I know that you, you've played up in Scotland. It's, it's, a, it's a brilliant place to play mm. rugby, and we we can say that we we are a very good team now, moving in the right direction with some world class talent in that squad. You just spoke about you know riding coattails, but what about uh, you know of the of the coattails of the Fords and the foundation they laid? Duhan van der Marwe getting a hat trick out in the wing, like he's a pretty special talent. Duan Muck van der Merwe. I have you know. Oh, yeah, we sorry. have you know. My apologies. All right. I'm, 
And we've got a Scott Australian in there and Sioni Muktua Palotta smashed it. Yeah, I said it. Sometimes I struggle to say that one. Um, look, lads, you know better than me. You know, you get good rugby players, right? You, you get brilliant rugby players and it's it, it's the ones that go above and beyond that that make the real difference and being world class. And, you know, I always, always say to a few mates who are coaching some at the highest level, if they're struggling to get a bit of go for, bring in a, a South African. <laughs> and in a South African, we've got a lad that can go forward, but is just a gifted athlete. And, you know, if you look at that game, Actually, he didn't start very well and he, he's a confidence player. If you speak to anyone about Duan, it's like, right, he needs to catch the first up and under. He needs a good run early on and then he'll go on to be man of the match and the best player on the pitch. But he actually started, he, he dropped an up and under, he got turned over on a carry. And obviously England know that, right? They know the psyche of different players, but the, it was the complete opposite. He went on to get a hat-trick. He's like a cheat code for Scotland. Uh, every team needs one, right? You need yeah. a player in that team that, that, that has X Factor. In Scotland, we've struggled. Yes, we've got Finn Russell at X Factor at 10, but you need someone to get over the game line. And, you know, with the South African influence that he brings, um, he is our cheat code. He is Scotland's cheat code. And to score a hat trick in a match, you know, in the fixture last year, he scored from the halfway line. Um, he, he scored some wonderful tries and... He's our point of difference. So whether or not people see him as a, as a true Scotsman or a South African, as a Scotsman and the fans, he lights up that stadium and he's earned that thistle. You know, he's earned that blue blood running through his veins and he does it at the highest level every time he puts on the jersey. So world-class talent. Now you talk about, um, in Scotland, you're talking about the fan slam now, obviously after not being able to beat France. I'm not sure if you saw Alex Corbusero's rap. Uh, but one of the lines in it, I was staying with him. He said, Big Jim said it's now or never. You need to show you can play in any weather. I won't keep going, but I've, I've heard a lot. Um, <laughs> it's in, in my head. But do you, if they don't beat Ireland, because previously before the Six Nations started, you said it is now or never. If they don't beat Ireland, how will it be perceived in Scotland still as a successful campaign or the one that got away? Oh, I'd definitely be the one that got away. Yes, I think you, you look at Ireland, though, there is a gulf between Ireland and everyone else in the mm. Six Nations, not just based on the World Cup, but just the way that they play. It's almost impossible to play against. The way they take the ball to the line, um, their physicality from 1 to 15, 1 to 23, 1 to 30. Any t any players they brought in, like Kieran Frawley at the weekend, um, you, whatever their centre partnership, Stuart McCluskey from Ulster has come into the squad and has just seamlessly got in there like he, he's a Gary Ringrose and, or a Bundyaki. They're a phenomenal team. So for me, as, as a Scotland fan and, and having watched them objectively, but also as a fan and want them to do well, it is one that's gone away. Uh, and Italy will touch on them, their, their result against France. They are finally a team where we all, everyone keeps saying they're getting better, they're getting better. We've still got to go to Rome and beat them. And they're going to be confident after that. Well, let's call it a win in France. It was a draw, as we know, but they should have won that. Yeah. And it could have, should have, would have for them. But from a Scotland perspective, that France game, uh, just the way in which it happened, you know, we were comfortable in that game for the majority of it against France. They get one opportunity to score. We come back into the into the game because we're good now. You know, we're, we're a quality team, and, and and the try that never was, and all the kind of hysteria that happened with with the referee and Nick Berry and the TMO and the try not given, and and it's the try that never was. I think anyone watching that, everyone agrees it was a try. You know, I work at World Rugby now. They wouldn't come out and say it was a try, but we know it's a try. They know it's a try. So well, you work for World Rugby. You know, we've and you got Italy to get past. You, you work at World Rugby and you just said it wasn't a try. So effectively, World Rugby have just come out and said it's no try. I mean, it was a try. There you go. That's exactly what I've done. I've purposely done it on your show, Lance. You know, I don't know whether that's going to hold any any clout or, or what have you. But look, you know, these are the small margins and people are saying we should never have been in that position. We, we should have brushed France off early, but we didn't. But we put ourselves into position to score. And it is the try that never was. And uh, I'm talking about the fan slam. In order to win the fan slam now, we've got to go to Dublin on Paddy's weekend. Oh, and ooh. again, you all know how tough it is to go there and play. They are, you know, they're the number one team in the world. I know they didn't do it on the highest level at the World Cup and they got beat by the All Blacks in that phenomenal, in the, you know, one of the best games of rugby that, that's ever been seen. But from a Scotland perspective, 
you know, instead of saying we're going in the right direction, I think everyone in the world can actually see that that we are. And I, I go back to that initial thing. We've got a generational talent now. Uh, but I think in order to be taken seriously, and again, I keep going back to you lads because you know, I don't really know, but you've got to win things, right? And you've got to be able to win the Six Nations. So we could be in a position there. We've dropped a couple of bonus points along the way. That's going to be crucial. You know, we could go to Ireland. They've got to go to England. I don't know. England do give them decent games. So, you know, they've still got to go to England, but it could be a Six Nations decider in, in Dublin on Paddy's weekend. So, who knows? I don't want to jinx it. We've got Italy next. But yeah, I, I think Ireland are some distance in front of every other team, it seems. Just from looking at just from looking at them. And just on the on the flight back from America, I was watching the Six Nations um documentary on Netflix. Is there a reason the voice of rugby, Jim Hamilton, you're not on there? How how come you missed out there? I don't know. Did know. you not get it's asked? Nothing. I got, I got asked for nothing. But the irony is in all this, mate, and look, I'm loving doing this and I've been <laughs> yeah, yeah, going. Yeah, for, the irony, for, yeah. for, for years. Um, mate, chase, I'm, I'm in Chasing the Sun too. So the world champions, South Africa, and the team of documentary makers there have asked me to feature there as, as the voice or one of the voices. I say, I might not have been it. They might cut me out, but I did five <laughs> hours interview with them. So hopefully they, they won't. But yeah, oh, I don't know. Fuck, I'd I don't love know. if I did you didn't make it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, got, I've said it now. I am the voice of Chasing the Sun 2. The documentary is <laughs> nowhere to be seen. I don't know. It was, it was a bit weird. Um, I, I've thought about it personally, why there's literally nothing and there's no anecdotes of us passing judgment. I'm going to blame my partner in crime, Andy Good, that he yeah. abuses all the players. So maybe they just wanted to keep it upbeat and positive. Now, we are going to get into your podcast pretty soon because I am a listener. You guys listen to the Rugby yeah, Pod? of course. Yep. Swoop. I'll bet get gets caught right. Look, he's like, yeah, as he drinks his water, 100%. Yeah, I listen to it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's just throwaway, of course. I'm, like, as in, who wouldn't listen to it? What's your favourite episode they've done? I'd be the latest one. <laughs> <laughs> can I ask you a quick question? Lads, can I, can I ask a quick question, if I may? I know it's your show. Of course. Yeah, so you, what's the thinking in lacing up the boots again? Is it money or is it for the, the love of playing on artificial pitches in America? <laughs> what, what's the crack? Oh, a bit of column A, column B. <laughs> no, it, the um, I think because I went a year out um, not playing, um, and my my final year when I was actually in LA, I had Coopy was one of my coaches, and he ruined my calf. I actually <laughs> never got on the pitch, so I didn't feel like I, I don't know, I still felt content and happy that I'd retired and had the career that I had, but then the opportunity to come back and play um, with a good team and potentially win um, and just finish a bit more on my terms uh, was pretty appealing. Yeah, well, one of the greatest we've ever done it. If not now, then obviously you'll never do it again. So <laughs> yeah, you look exactly. like Chuck Liddell as well. You've been told that? I have. I actually didn't even know his nickname okay. was Iceman. Everyone in America called me Iceman. I'm going... How do they know? Well, <laughs> no. You're looking at your arms. <laughs> no. I was thinking of that Kuklinski. Isn't oh, he the yeah. Ice Man? Yeah. Used to kill people. Yeah, yeah, I, like, right. I don't get it. Hey, Jim, you're the same age as Gitz. What about you lacing them up? Maybe Denver or Utah or any chance? Mm, no chance. No chance. I played in a testimonial game about about a year ago, I think it was. So Billy Twelve Trees, Gloucester, Leicester, played for British and Irish Lions. He asked me to play. And I was like, there's no chance. And then we had a little bit of sad news over here that one of my good friends, Ed Slater, who mm. was Gloucester captain Leicester, got diagnosed with MND. And the game became bigger than just Billy Twelve Trees cashing in at the end of his career to put in his in his back pocket for, for drinking days. And, and it turned into a bit of a fundraiser for Ed Slater. So Slates asked me to play. And obviously I was like, right, you know, former Scotland vice captain, um, wasn't good for a pass or a tackle, but could count a ruck. I was like, mate, I'll play for you, Ed. I'll do it. And then I remember James Hook. And it's one of these exhibition games, lads. I don't know how many you've played in, mm -hmm. but James Hook was on the opposition team. And that was the British and Irish Lions legends versus the team that I was in, which I, I just think we were the Gloucester legends. So there, there was a golf in talent. And I thought it was gentlemen's agreement. So like first kickoff goes up. 
they've got a breakdown five meters from their, their own try line. I'm out in the wide channel, and Hooky's looking at me and my best mate who's outside me who played like second division rugby and had put on about five stone and, <laughs> and didn't do any training whatsoever. And Hooky's looked up, and I'm like, Hooky, I played for the Barbarians with Hooky. I'm like, Hooky, just kick it long, kick it long. Next thing, he runs directly at me and he hands me off in the chest, <laughs> and my head goes back. My head goes back like that and it nips a nerve and I get oh, pins and needles in my oh, feet. No. Oh. So I am frozen to the ground and I can hear the, la- the crowd is- are laughing. Everyone's <laughs> laughing at me and I'm just frozen like that. And I was like, yeah, I am never, ever been in this position again. But it was for a good cause. Mm. So that's how I package it. And that's what I told the wife when I went back and I couldn't walk for a week. <laughs> Very, very good. Hey, uh, Jim, we're just going to finish this summation, if we can, yeah. quickly. Sorry yeah. to double back no, there. No, yeah. okay. Uh, Ireland 31, Wales 7. You've already touched on how Ireland are basically the number one team in the world at the moment. Um, Wales, obviously a bit of a rebuild. Everybody hates that term because we've heard it here for the last 25 years. Um, <laughs> any any surprises there? I, I did listen to your podcast. Well, Gitz and I listened to it together. <laughs> and um, you predicted that. I think, did you say 23 points or something? It's pretty big that you said. Yeah, I think my uh, yeah, Goody said uh, it would be twenty five or twenty eight. I, I went a more, uh, you know, a respectful fifteen points better. But that is me being respectful. But actually, you know, you hear about the rebuilds and all these different kind of taglines that get thrown about. You know, Wales actually are mm. doing really well considering what they've got. Their regions are, are in complete disarray. Um, you know, everything around the Wales squad, Lactics Nations, which didn't feature in, in, in the Netflix doc, which was bizarre because everyone wants to see a little bit of drama. But they're, they're a kind of union which to be perceived from the outsider on their knees. But actually, you look at the style of rugby that they're playing and the young lads that they've got in, like young Welsh talent that, you know, as in speaking frankly and respectfully, no one would know half of that squad. You know what I mean? And you say that because there'll be Welsh players in years gone by that, British and Irish Lions, like they're, they're rugby legends. But, but in Gatland, yes, they've got an old school coach, but they've got a coach that's been there and done that. And they have blooded some fantastic young players coming through. And, you know, their back row is brilliant. They've got a couple of really good young tens, like Sam Costello. Um, they've got some some good centres. You know, George North playing at 13. Uh, the old boy's still going, but looks good in, in 13. Nick Tompkins, they've got Rio, Di- Rio Dyer, on the wing, who's good. They've got Josh Adams. They've got a young 21-year-old captain in Daffy Jenkins. And it, I think against Ireland away, it's a respectful score. But people need to understand that they're a, a kind of union and, and a country at the minute from a rugby point of view that are on their knees. But I've seen enough in there to know that, you know, the old tagline with them when they put on the, the red jersey that, that they stand 10 feet tall and... That they can do something. So I think the future, there's snippets of of kind of sunshine that's coming into in, into that team. But yeah, it's been a tough championship. They've obviously not won a game yet. Sweep, I thought you put your hand up there. No. Did you? You said Jimbo, Sweep's I got one watching for you. Again. You said Roch Balls, I got one. Yeah. No, I said, I've got to go. He's got oh, you've got to go. I've got to go to his board <laughs> meeting. I've got to go to board oh, meeting. Oh, yeah, what time's your board meeting? Sorry, Jim. Well, you can go now. That's Swoop's all good. Got a six. Swoop? No, no. I've got a six. Sorry, Jim, uh, Swoop. Doesn't want to hang around to hear this, so he's going to head. <laughs> I'll hold the fort. I'll hold the fort. Yeah. Right. Thanks, fellas. Thank you. Good, Good to see you, Swoop. Jim, Love the other that. one to touch on, France, Italy. Um, we've all seen that final penalty goal. Was that the most chaotic penalty you've ever seen taken? Oh, it was crazy. Uh, poor Carlo, uh, Paolo Carbisi. Um like, I don't know, because I watched it and then I had to come to the airport, so I haven't gone through the game. Not that I love my ruggers enough to watch games two or three times, but you go based on social media. I didn't realise the chaos at the end with the uh, the, the water the man yeah. that was on the pitch or the physio that was on the pitch. The fact that there was a couple of charge down attempts, which is crazy, but I mean, it, it's it's the French. So as we know, lads, it's uh, it can be crazy. So really, he should have, like Christoph, the ref should have said, look, mate, you, you can take the take the penalty again. Mm. So it was absolute chaos. So the fact that he, he dropped the ball off the tee a couple of times, he was rushed, the, the, the shot clock that comes on. But again, that, that's a missed opportunity. And it just shows you, doesn't it, the kind of panic. Really, if he had, you know, the experience, I suppose, and the calmness in that moment, uh, because they're about to win a game. And I say this, I keep saying respectfully, but, you know, Italy don't win games in the Six Nations. So they, they've not been in that position where they're about to beat France in France. I think it was back in... The 70s or something, the last time they, they won there. I mean, goodness me, if I was Michele Lamoureux, the captain, I would have said, no, no, 
he needs to retake it. Mm. And they would have seen that with the TMO that they've got. But yeah, France are in disarray. I mean, Italy are much better just for the listeners and for you lads there. If you go based on the under 20s, they beat France yeah. the night before or, or sorry, on the Friday night. Uh, they've beaten Ireland in the age grade stuff of the under 16s, under 18s. They ran Ireland close. Um, a couple of weeks ago, and Ireland are the best team under 20s wise. Everyone's talking about Ireland, how good they are, but what's coming through, and Italy are beating them. So they've got some wonderful talent coming through. But France, um, and I, I, I looked at France in the first game against Ireland, thought, oh, they're okay. They've not got Anton Dupont. And then I saw them against Scotland, and I was like, something's not right mm. in this French team. And then you dig a little bit deeper, and not that you go based on Midi Olympique. But, um, you know, there's stuff in there saying that there's a bit of unrest within the camp between Sean Edwards and Fabian Gautier. Right. And we know, lads, don't we? We've played there. It is chaos, yeah. isn't it? it? It's crazy. And they're, and they're very emotion-led. Yeah. But well, yeah, I think also, generally, yeah. it, when you're in France, if it's in the press, it's probably it's, true. Yeah. Whereas in Australia or UK, it's more just gossip, I think. So I think there might be some truth around that. Yeah, right. There you go. Yeah. Uh, that was the Six Nations yeah. summation. Is everybody happy yeah. with that? Do you want to dig any deeper? That's in depth. Or? Your, your yeah. knowledge is amazing, Jim. Well, it has to be, mate. Oh, under no, 16s, hey, Netflix, under 18s. Me, mate. <laughs> well, I say that, actually. I need to give my mate Bernard Jackman a shout out. He's one of the best in the business, and I had him on, and I'm not plugging the Big Jim show. No, no you can't. Oh, right. I actually watched that Jim one more. Show. Yeah, thank you. But he he came on and it was him. So I'm just kind of regurgitating and then like proof checking after the podcast, which I don't need to do. But he's one of the best in the business, and and like that's what he was talking about. He he actually flagged the Midi Olympic article on France, and you know like you know we chat ruggers, and, and you've got to stay close to the game, lads. As you know, there's only, only so much banter you can throw out there before people <laughs> get sick of you. So you need to offer something else. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, well, Let's take that note. Is that where yeah. we're going wrong? <laughs> we're going wrong everywhere. Again. <laughs> yeah, okay. Absolutely. Such, it's a good lads. time to bring up. Hey, obviously, rugby pod, massive, massive around the world. Um, how many years have you been going for, Jim, with the rugby pod? This is the eighth season. Wow. Okay. We've done four shows. Actually, this is the fourth. <laughs> have you got any tips? Well, firstly, lads, you're smashing it. And the first tip, and I know this has been a kind of private conversation in the background with the lads is do it yourself and you've gone out alone and done it i think that you lads have got such a cool brand um i'm going to call you icons of australian rugby but you don't need your tires we'll pumping it. up anymore but that's what you are were, so were I think you waiting that, for swoop to like, leave before you said that? <laughs> uh, he didn't ask me a question he was like when's he going who's this bloke now? Yeah. Like, he, he often will watch the pod he forgets that he's actually supposed to speak yeah we've got a screen over here and he just watches it and just, and we're like, Wait. oh another boy yeah yeah no, he's, he's a legend as well. But that's what you are. I think, like, you've got to go out there alone. And it's great to see that you lads done that. Like, we've got complete kind of control. We've got editorial control of what we do. And I think for, like, me personally, like, doing the pod was never meant to be, uh, and it might be different for you lads, it was never meant to be about making money. That's kind of just happened as a kind of byproduct of being in the industry and being kind of first movers and stuff like that, which is amazing, right? Doing a podcast, it's the kind of... Everyone needs a podcast, whatever you're talking about. But, um, yeah, I think doing it for the right reasons, like doing it and having fun. And, you know, part, part of it is, is like we have a responsibility now about growing the game and whatever that responsibility is or whatever it looks like. But it's the dream job, you know, and it really is. Like I'm down in London now. It's six o'clock in the morning, going to the studio today to talk a little bit about rugby and have a crack. It doesn't get much better than that. So I'm absolutely loving it. You know, I'm doing my own stuff as well on the side. Uh, and using the platform that we've got. And, uh, yeah, the feedback's been good so far. But it's awesome to see what you lads are doing as well. And I, I just think, you know, like, you know, with the initial podcast where you put out about names, mm -hmm. I should have come back. I've got this unbelievable name, I think I said, to Gitz. Yes. But I never – and I, I say I didn't come up with it. My mate came up with it. I said, oh, have you heard the lads doing the podcast over, down in Australia? I said, Adam Ashley Cooper, the great Matt Gitter, and uh, Drew Mitchell. And he said, what? The Waller Boys. Oh, I said, that's, that's the name, isn't one. it? The that's Waller what he said Boys. to me. He said Waller Boys. I said, "All oh, right, uh, well, we're now three apps in. <laughs> <laughs> We've already that's got t-shirts. Maybe we could change it. <laughs> Can we change it, Ollie? No, no, that's a big no. Okay. Mate, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Good shout. Jim, are you going to Hong Kong this year for the sevens? No, no, I am staying out of the weeds of Hong Kong. That is what we like to call 
Drew, heaven and hell, where it collides. Yeah. Uh, I'm all about heaven at the minute. I thought we might try and slay the dragon together. We're all going up for the Hong yeah. Kong. And I mean, we had a, a pretty good time last time when we uh, when we caught up in Hong Kong. I thought yeah. maybe we could run it back. Yeah. It is good. That is what I mean. I'm I'm not needing a good time at the minute. That's what I feel like. If I need a good time, I'll head to Hong Kong. But I am very, very busy at the minute, which is great. But uh, uh, yeah, Hong Kong is... Sounds like you need I'm a blowout. Yeah. <laughs> I do need a blowout. You know what, lads? I could see you there. You know what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do it. If, if this gets uh, 2,000 comments saying, Big Jim, do it, you've got to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, God. Uh, Beth, I'm going to Hong Kong. She's not even here. I'm, to <laughs> She's not even here. I'm just letting her know. She can hear me. <laughs> well, what about, uh, obviously, British and Irish lines are coming down here. Surely you're coming down to our fair shores next year. 100%. Okay. This is where it all started, actually. No, not not here in Australia um, or here where I am in a hotel room in London. But the British and Irish Lions tour, when they went to New Zealand in 2017, is where I started all my kind of stuff. No. You know, the kind of circus act that, that, that kind of turned into something. So hopefully this time round, there'll be an opportunity for... For me, the podcast to do some stuff. I absolutely love Australia. I've got some good mates down there as well. I think it will be tougher than people think. I think you've got the right man in charge. You're obviously a proud country. There's history in that tournament, uh, a wicked place to play rugby. So hopefully, I'll get a nice pitch side posi uh, position and cause a bit of chaos. I, I feel like there's an opportunity to collab maybe. When you come down, we'll host you. Yeah, for a few beers and oh, if we're still just, around, just turn the mics on. <laughs> yeah, we might be the Wobble yeah, Boys by then. <laughs> yeah, once we, we may have rebranded, yeah, this one might collapse. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, yeah, you never know. Hey, well, do you, you might know, as, I don't know if you know just quickly before. Um, I know you, you want to wrap up, and it's not all about me, but your producer Ollie. You know, he owns part of the Rugby Pod as well. He's the original OG. So oh. I, I feel that he's, he's got a backup. Pie. He's got a backup plan. Game. He's got an exit yeah. strategy by the sounds <laughs> of it. <laughs> Yeah, you've got an extra strategy. You need, there's maybe another podcast with the with the new lads, coming, like Nick White, the Waller boy. Maybe that's what he's thinking. It's a oh. business decision. Hey, Jim, you, you didn't actually get to play British and Irish Lions, did you? Is there a bit of a... No, the one in 2013. No, it's no, it's, it's fine. I got picked in 2013 uh, to go uh, to the one to Australia, one where George North picked up Israel Folau. That's, yeah, that's just kind of what I remember it for, really. Um, but I did get picked before and... All my mates, actually, I called up. So he's not meant to tell anyone. So I got told by Graham Roundtree, who was the forwards coach at the time. He's coaching mm. Munster. And I was at Leicester with, with Graham, a.k.a. Wig. And he rang me and says, mate, he said, I don't know how, but you're in. He said, but I'm be <laughs> honest with you. He said, I think you're going to be more of a midweek man. I said, mate, I said, the fact that I'm in, I'll be a midweek, whatever you want. And I told all my mates, they all booked via Hong Kong mm. because the British and Irish Lions were playing against the Barbarians. Um, they all booked to go to... Australia and they all work in factories, right? So they're, they're not well off men, like as in this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to watch their best mate playing for the Lions, albeit midweek. And then the squad was getting announced that day, and I'm obviously buzzing. I mean, I, to be fair to me, I was playing well for Scotland at the time. I got man of the match against Ireland. Um, you know, my average penalty count was down from about 15 to nine. So <laughs> I was, you know, in, in a good place. And then the day before, it could have even been the day of the announcement, Wig rang me and said, mate, We've had a change of plan. Uh, Paul oh. O'Connell is now back. He's fit. And we're going to go with Paul. I said, hang on. I was like, Mate, you never told me I was competing for a position with fucking Paul O'Connell. <laughs> I was like, I, I said, it wasn't me or Paul O'Connell. It was me and a guy called Ian Evans who was playing for Wales. And he just turned around and said, look, mate, Gats Gat thinks you're a liability. You're not going. And oh. I was absolutely devastated. And... um I couldn't even tell my mates. I couldn't say, lads, you've spent 10 grand a pop heading down to the lines. I'm probably not going to be able to get your tickets because I'm not going to be playing. Oh. So I just went along with it. And <laughs> yeah, the story goes on. I'll just finish it with this. But I actually played in the Barbarians game in Hong Kong. Yeah. And we just mentioned about Hong Kong and what Hong Kong's like. So to say that I was under conditioned in that game would be an <laughs> understatement. But uh, I was actually playing. I actually signed for Montpellier from Gloucester as well. So there was a number of things in the mix, and I needed shoulder surgery. And the idea was I was going to have sh shoulder surgery after the Lions tour, go to Montpellier as a British and Irish Lions, shoulder all fixed. But they wanted me to have it uh, fixed before, so I had shoulder surgery two weeks before I played against the Lions in Hong Kong, and that's the oh, excuse Jesus. for missing ten tackles in the game, and, and <laughs> yeah, almost 
yeah, almost having a heart attack because I've been out in Hong Kong for four nights in a row. So that's as close as I got to the Lions, lads. So hopefully this time round I'll be a lot closer. Well, we'll get you a spot on the sideline. Um, we probably know the broadcasters, do we? <laughs> I reckon Jim might be okay getting yeah, a spot Yeah, i got a feeling he will He works be. at World Rugby, remember? Yes, I know. I know. Hey, Jim, uh, well, uh, we've kept you long enough. It is 6 a.m. Uh, you probably have a gym class or something to get to. Um, Jim, um, mate, what we like to do with all the guests that we have on is we prepare a little quiz uh, and the way it works is the guys compete against each other and then you reveal the answer. It's all about you. Uh, are you happy to do that with us? Oh, of course. Let's go. It's time now for the Coco Quiz. <laughs> head to head. Yeah. So now it's uh, Goit v Biv. Mm. Um, obviously, Swoop got the win in the first bit today or... Sorry. No, it was a draw. Mm. It was a draw. Yeah, he knows. All right, here we go. The uh, Jim Hamilton Scotland Quiz. Four years ago, Jim named his Six Nations best ever 15 players he played against. Which of these blokes did he say he hated on the field? Was it A, Johnny Wilkinson, B, Alan Wynne-Jones, C, Mike Phillips, or D, all of the above because they always beat Scotland? Um, I'm going to go B, Alan Wynne-Jones. Hmm. But he would have hated Mike as well, I think. Mm. Um, I'm going to go all of the above. Do you know the answer there, Jim? I'm guessing. I think Mike Phillips, but actually I charged him down every time we played against him, so he absolutely <laughs> hates me. I know he was on last week. I think it might have been Johnny Wilkinson because of a decision in one of the games, which was just ridiculous, where he was about 10 metres in touch. Uh, for a try in Twickenham after he'd come back from injury. And I was just shocked they gave him the score. And he, he put me into next week as well when I ran, tried to run over him. <laughs> so I might have said, Johnny. Well, Jim, it was four years ago. It was actually Mike Phillips. So it, it is oh, sounding it more and more like all of the above, to be yeah, honest. It sounds like I was correct. <laughs> oh, Do you hate go. Alan Wynne Jones or did you? Oh, uh, yeah, well, I, I, I referenced the story of Alan Wynne Jones. Uh, he was a very, very hard man, which you, I, I obviously has to be, right? He's a legend of the game, one of the most capped players to have ever done it. But yeah, I, I didn't like Alan Wynne Jones just because he was a proper tough guy, not like me, a fake tough guy. That sounds like a ding, ding, ding. <laughs> you just <laughs> talked your way into that answer. It does. I'll say it was. It, yeah, it was Alan Wynne Jones. Sorry. You Alan can't, Wynne Jones. You there can't we go, Mike. And John. John. No, you in. can't negotiate. You can't start getting the guests. <laughs> sounds like he points. doesn't remember. <laughs> it does a lot. Um, okay. I don't remember. Question number two Jim Hamilton often finds himself on a certain rugby list each year. Rugby's top 10 biggest what? A. Thugs. B. Cheats. C. Disappointments. <laughs> D. Penises. <laughs> thugs. Yeah, I think thugs as well. You still like a little, got little itchy fist. He likes fists. to rustle. Yeah. yeah. Jim? No, it's legends. <laughs> <laughs> e. Legends. Uh, I believe, Jim, it is A. Is that right? Ding. A. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Two. Yeah, I think it is. Legacy. <laughs> Question number three. Which one of these is not one of Jim's nicknames? It's not his nickname. A, the melted wheelie bean. <laughs> B, the plastic Scotsman. C, Big Jim. D, the lion's legend. <laughs> oh, in my eyes, it's not D, but I think for this quiz, it's D. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to say A, because I don't think they call them wheelie bins. Oh, contentious. Jim? That's, that's my rationale. No, I have. I've been called the Mounted Wheelie Bin. Oh. Before, but I think that was a self name. I like a name myself that to <laughs> the demise of my children when people are saying it down the street to me. But it, obviously, it's going to be the Lions legend that never was. Um, that's not the nickname. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Pulling ahead here. Ding, ding. Yeah, like Whilst playing for Leicester, Jim Hamilton famously scored a hat trick against an international opponent. Which international powerhouse did Jim score three against? Is it A, South Africa, B, France, C, Australia, D, India? Here you go. <laughs> France. B. India. D, India. Jim? Thanks, guys. Man, you are a legend as well. If <laughs> only it was France. Yeah, it was um, a 138 nil thriller 
I get Cynthia. <laughs> when did you play them? What was that for? 2003 exhibition game sold out at Welford Road. They had a couple of Bollywood stars playing for them. And each of my three tries, and I was known as James Hamilton then because I was a youngster. I didn't know how loose I was going to be. So I wasn't <laughs> big Jim then. I was called James Hamilton. And all three tries were scored from my own half off the kickoff. So that probably shows you the level of the game. Take out the score line of 138 now. I scored three from the halfway line. I actually I knew that one because I think there was something on Twitter one time and, and Jim reminded me that he'd scored three against India. Yes. Yeah. Do you have any hat-tricks, Biff? Oh, I've got a few. That's not <laughs> Irrelevant. Kits, yeah. you got a hat-trick international? Yep. Three of you all got hat-tricks. That's fantastic. Maybe, yeah. uh, when Leicester... Yeah, don't tigers... me like that. No, I wasn't. Yeah, you were judging me. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't questioning you, mate. I knew you'd score three. Okay. Against who were you, Gits? Doesn't matter. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not like Indonesia or Malaysia. No, no, or... no, no. Namibia. <laughs> oh, that counts. Yeah. All right. I mean, I'm not going to judge anybody. I can't even catch. All right. <laughs> Question five. When Leicester Tigers prop Julian White called out the number 69, what did Jim have to do right away? Was it A, tweak his nipples, B, punch the opposing team's player, C, scull a pint of Guinness, or D, initiate dinner for two? <laughs> B, itchy fists, thug. Itchy fists? Yeah, that's the thug. B, uh, Jim, you got the answer there for us? Yeah, it's Thug Life 69. <laughs> thug Life 69. <laughs> so the New South Wales Blues here, Jim, had a very famous call, uh, Cattle Dog, which was basically the same thing, right? Mm. So what you'd be packing into the scrum and you would hear the number 69 and you'd go, oh, God, I've got to punch someone? Yeah. Yeah, drop the bind and send one through. And if you hit one of your own players, that was a bonus as well. So it's like a double 69. What, yeah. what happens at home? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. She calls it in. She yeah. calls it in and the police get called. <laughs> <laughs> we don't condone any of that. No, of course not. Uh, the tiebreaker was in Jim's test career for Scotland in his 63 matches. What was his winning percentage? Uh, but that doesn't matter. There, that's <laughs> no, 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 please don't. Don't you dare. I'm this not going to, positive. Jim. Please don't. I'm not going to, Jim. Um, Can we get the score update? Uh, Gits. Yeah, you won again. Did I? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, ding, ding, ding. Congratulations to Gits. <laughs> hey, Jim, thank you so much for coming on, mate. I know it's tough at 6 a.m. and um, you are a big star in the world of podcasts and it's an absolute pleasure and rugby to have you on. So thanks for your time, mate. Amazing. Yeah, thank you. No, yeah, legend. No, anytime, lads. And I don't know how long it will take to send over one of those T-shirts, but if you've got a 2XL extra long, I would love to wear one. Mate, I'll bring one over. So, <laughs> well, you're going to fly one over? You guys going to send me? that? Des- well, if he's going to wear it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we will send you. No, we'll get you one for sure. Absolutely. What colour would you like? A black one. Black, black one. one. Yeah. Yes, black, please. Yeah, all black. Should have been. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, what a great get, Gitz. You've yeah. got yes. him. This, you know how podcasts have a moment where they go into the stratosphere? Mm. This might be it for us. Yeah, he's very good. At the moment, we're 2-2. Two, two. Swoops not doing anything in terms of guests. Oh, that's a well, good point. or anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even speaking whilst yeah. on the pod. Yeah. It's actually no different when he's not here. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I didn't realise he'd gone. <laughs> uh, but you know what he gets? He He's McDreamy, mate. The yeah. ladies love But it's yeah. also he's that occasion ice. when you get holiday swoop. Mm. It's and, and some of his rugby it. insight. Yes. They're the, the D. Yeah. God, I hope we get holiday swoop next week. Yeah. We're just going to have to spy his dress. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't think he can help himself. Yeah, he can't. Yeah. yeah I'll be going we won't have early. to worry. No, that's good. All right. Hey, socials is where you can find us. Uh, kickoffs and kickons everywhere. Just type it in at kickoffs and kickons. Please like and subscribe. Uh, we're back next week. We are at Super Round, uh, Super Round Melbourne with Joe Schmidt. So yeah. make sure you tune in for that. Hope you enjoyed it. Anybody else want to add anything? Oh, quick little shout out to my seals in San Diego. That's our little mini team. Led by Darcy, they wanted a shout out, so I'm missing you boys. Oh, oh. <laughs> that, that was my shout out to the boys. Good one. Yeah. Do you want to give us a a, a, a or a uh, no, I like to go um cuckoo. <laughs> I changed it this time. Good one. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, yeah. again. <laughs> cuckoo. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> G'day, I hope you enjoyed that video. There's lots more here on our YouTube page. If you did enjoy it, make sure you click like 
And if you super enjoyed it, make sure you click subscribe. That's how we get lots of views. Lots of, uh, well, that's how we hopefully get a sponsor. So make sure you click those two buttons and just have a bloody good day.